Hello and welcome to In the Kitchen with Mary Mack. Today our topic is the hunky platter. We made a graphic for a blog called You Jag Off in the Pittsburgh area, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania that is, and the title of it is You Jag Off because that's a common term that's yelled from vehicles in western Pennsylvania and at sporting events and when people do something dumb, that's just a thing you say. Yeah, yeah, jag off. Well, this particular blog points out people doing jag offy things and points out Pittsburgh things and western Pennsylvania things. So um, we made a little thing called a Lunchable, which you may know that a Lunchable is a little prepackaged lunchbox. They're kind of weird little things. And so we put together what we called the Pittsburgh Lunchable. And one of our Pittsburgh Lunchables was a hunky platter. And it included uh, the things we thought would go in a hunky platter, my producer and I. <laughs> and I graphic just, designer. I just did the Photoshop. I had nothing to do with the items picked. <laughs> I'm the brains behind the operation. She's just the, you know. The brawn. The brawn. So we put in uh, pierogies, and then we put in another pierogi, and then we put in uh, kielbasa, butter and onions, and sauerkraut, and a tiny little Iron City drink box for the child who would want that with their Pittsburgh Lunchable. And it was a big hit on Facebook. It's got a lot of views and people thought it was really funny. So we got to thinking, geez, I wonder if people ever heard of a hunky platter or know what a hunky platter is or know what a pierogi is for that matter. Pierogi is like, you know, that's it's like a basic necessity in Western Pennsylvania. So we thought we would find a professional pierogi maker and a professional hunky platter connoisseur and invite them to our podcast to help answer some of these questions. So today we have Mary Lou Andrushenko, who uh, has made thousands upon thousands of pierogies of various styles. You might say she's an expert on uh, Eastern European foods because she brought all of her expert books with her today so, <laughs> so she can answer our questions. Hello, Mary Lou. Hello, everyone. Hunky, did, did you see our hunky uh, platter uh, graphic for yes. this? Yes, it's marvelous. <laughs> Were we pretty accurate on that? Did oh, we do an okay job? Yes, you did. So what would you say would constitute a hunky, a real hunky platter? Well, first of all, you have to have kielbasa. Okay. That's a must. And, of course, the pierogi or veraniki or however you want to say it. What's a veraniki? A veraniki is the Ukrainian word. Oh, that's Ukrainian for pierogi. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. we just learned something. Okay. Yes. I'm going to throw that out there in downtown sometime. Yeah, there you go. I don't want a pierogi. I want a veraniki. That's right. No one will know what you mean. That's though. true. I won't get anything. <laughs> well, okay. What else would Ukrainians go Ukrainians will know what you mean. That's true. If it's a Ukrainian person, then <laughs> yes. I'll be in good shape. Yes. <laughs> and I believe pierogies plus are Ukrainians. Oh, yeah. I think you're right. They're Ukrainian. Their, they'll, they'll, their pierogies are fantastic. Yes. Pierogies Plus in McKee's Rocks. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. That's that's a really good place mm-hmm. to get pierogies. They also have a website, and they ship. So in case you are interested in that sort of thing, check them out. Mm-hmm. So the, everybody <laughs> has a pierogi. All of Eastern Europe has a pierogi. Yes. And they're all a little bit different, and everybody doesn't make theirs right. I'm sure everyone says, oh, they don't make theirs right. Apparently, they don't spell it right, and they don't say it right either. So how many different ways are there to say pierogi? Well, you can say it pierogi, padohi, veraniki, parahi, tomato, tomato. There's so many different spellings. And people get very touchy if you misspell I've pierogi. I've noticed that. See, the Polish version of it is spelled P-I-E-R-O-G. Okay. And the plural is with an I at the end. No I-E. No so it's wa- like... Pierog, if yes. you want one, and it's pierogi for yes. more than one in Polish. What about in Ukrainian? What is the Ukrainian? Veraniki. Veraniki. Mm-hmm. And it's Veranik? Veraniki? Veraniki. Or, okay. Well, what is pierog? Where does... Do you ever see the prohi? Yes. Where's that from? Um, I am not sure which exactly country that comes from, but I'll find out. She's looking on her phone. She's a wizard on her phone. Well, it doesn't really say, so I'll have to research that. Okay. But I do want to tell you that National Pierogi Day is coming up. Oh, really? On October the 8th. October the 8th is National Pierogi Day. Everybody needs to eat pierogies on October the 8th. Our timing is impeccable. We'll make sure we get our 
uh, little recipes going before that so people can have some sort of a, an idea of how to make and serve a pierogi from our fabulous Mary Mac Bakehouse Facebook page. Yes. What else would go in our hunky platter? Well, some people would like to have a stuffed cabbage. Stuffed cabbage. Also okay. called pigs in a blanket. Okay. What's in a stuffed cabbage? What do you put in a stuffed cabbage? I put in my stuffed cabbage, it, I take a mixture of hamburger and rice. Okay. Onions, garlic, push it all together, roll it up in a cabbage leaf, and you can either bake them in the oven or you can cook them on top of the stove in a Dutch oven. Okay. With tomato sauce. Okay. So you could have, we could have had a pigs in a blanket. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. What about halushki? Halushki? Halushki. Halushki. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, halushki. So how do you make halushki? Halushki is merely cabbage, onions, butter, add some garlic if you want, salt and pepper, saute that, just like you're making a pierogi filling, pretty much. And then you can you toss it with egg noodles or homemade noodles if you want. Who would want to? Well, okay. Somebody might want to make homemade noodles, but when you can buy a bag of noodles, I'm sorry, people, I'm lazy. Should, the truth should be known now early on. <laughs> I don't know anyone that makes, very few people make their homemade noodles. I tried to make homemade noodles one time. Somebody gave me this foolproof recipe for them, you know. So I, you're supposed to, like, make the dough and put flour on your table and roll them out onto your table and mm-hmm. cut them. Mm-hmm. And then you let them dry, and then you pick them up, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I did all those things, and when I tried to pick them up, they were cemented to my table. And I ended up having to get <laughs> one of those, like, widget scrapers to get them off. I couldn't get them off my table. Needless to say, we did not have noodles that night. I do not know why they did that. When I was a kid, we used to make noodles every week, and my mother would put them on a sheet. <gasps> Cheating. On top of the table. <laughs> you have to have a sheet between the table and the noodles. Yes. Well, that would have been useful. Good good to know if yes. I ever decide if to try ever, that. If thing you ever want to torture yourself at making homemade noodles, oh. there well, you that, go. my one event cured me. I think I spent two or three hours trying mm-hmm. to scrape them off the table. Well, the bad part was you couldn't eat at the table until the noodles were dry. Ah. So a couple of days you <laughs> standing up with your plate. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my gosh. Okay, now for for the pierogies. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you make pierogies? What I mean, what are pierogies? And what would you say, like, how would you tell someone if they wanted to make pierogies? What advice would you give them? Okay. First of all, don't skimp on your ingredients. Don't use junky ingredients. Don't use art, artificial anything. Don't use instant potatoes. Do the real thing. Boil your potatoes. Okay. Use real cheese. If you want cheese in there, use real butter. Do not use margarine. Okay. Yes, this is the real deal. This is the real deal. Don't use Velveeta cheese, whatever you do. Okay, good advice. Terrible. Make sure I like Longhorn Colby cheese okay. for my filling. That's my favorite. You make good. You make excellent pierogies. I'm what? not even saying good. You make excellent pierogies. Why, thank you. Okay, well, there's lots of good pierogi recipes on it, on the Internet because um, they're pretty popular these days. So if you get online, I'm sure you'll find the basics there, because uh, it's what we were talking about, a good pierogi recipe, but Mary Lou says they're all basically the same, and there's a lot of them on the Internet. So basically it would be a dough that is the mm-hmm. outside of the pierogi and the filling. Mm-hmm. And when you make your filling, what do you generally put in your filling other than the mashed potatoes? I use cabbage. Okay. I take my the cabbage and I cut it up real fine. What I do, I do a little cheater. I buy the coleslaw mix in the bags. Okay. And then I just chop it up very fine. Okay. Then you saute that in butter. All right. And onions. And you put a lot of pepper and not a lot of salt, but more pepper than salt. Okay. And then you just taste it. And when you get to the good taste, and then you're done. Okay. So that's one. We also do a popular one. It is a sharp cheddar. With bacon bits, real bacon bits, not the bacon. Oh, yeah, not fake. Not Don't fake get those bake. fake bacon. Or faking. Don't use faking. Don't use that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And that's a very popular one. We also do, which we don't, I don't sell, I don't do a lot of those, but cottage cheese. Okay. That was a big one when I was a kid. P- older people love that one. Okay. Cottage cheese or farmer's cheese, whatever you want to use. Um, we also used to do sauerkraut. 
Okay. But we decided we like the sweet cabbage better. Yeah, sweet. I do. I like the cabbage yeah. better too than the we sauerkraut. Like, sauerkraut. Yeah. So I don't do a lot of sauerkraut anymore. Now, when you make your progies, now what? I know some people boil them, and some people mm-hmm. like to brown them in the skillet. Mm-hmm. And just do you have to boil them before you brown them in yes. the skillet? Okay. Yes. So basically, the way to cook a pierogi is you're going to boil it until it's done. Yes. Which is not very long, like a couple minutes, and. Um, we, I tried them uh, in a skillet. I melted butter in a skillet, and mm-hmm. I browned them up in that, and everybody really liked them. Yes. I hadn't done them like that before. Yes. And then you have to top them with butter and onions. Now, how do you, there's, for the butter and onions, I realize it's not real complicated, mm-hmm. but how do you do the butter and onions? What do you do? How do you cook it? Well, I just throw a bunch of butter in a frying pan and a bunch of onions. <laughs> <laughs> You don't brown the onions, though, right? You just They're just clear. They, you just cook them until they're clear. Yeah, unless okay. you forget and you go outside and do something <laughs> and you come back and they're brown. But you can still use those. But you can we... still use those. Oh. And so, some people also like to, to chop up bacon and put on top of their pierogi. Ah. So that's an, also an alternative. That's a new twist. Mm-hmm. I saw one at, at a, uh, we were at a restaurant. I don't remember where the, where was it? We were at a restaurant and they had uh, pierogies with, they had sautéed a variety of vegetables in a skillet mm-hmm. and served that over the pierogies, and I thought mm-hmm. that sounded interesting because I'd never heard of that before. So it was a little something different there. So basically, when you when you have pierogies, you serve them with uh, butter and onions over them, or butter onions and bacon, mm-hmm. or something like that. Um, also, sour cream. Oh, sour cream. People, some people mm. like to have sour cream on the side. Okay. And use it like a dip. Okay, and then you said the main ingredient of a hunky platter would be kielbasa. Oh, yes. What kind of kielbasa would you recommend for something like that? Is there a particular brand or is there a national brand or something well, like that? I don't really like the national brands because there's a lot of filler okay. in them. Um, a couple of local places here have some really good kielbasa, one of which is Beatty's. Okay. Uh, one of which is Ruley Brothers and Boardman. Okay. Petulo Brothers and Boardman also. They have a really good one. So you think it would be better to look for a locally made kielbasa in your area? Yes. They're probably, I, I would imagine kielbasa is made everywhere because it's such mm-hmm. a popular thing. And there's so many uh, people from that part of the world everywhere. So right. I imagine you could, you could get it. There's a national brand that everyone uses. I won't say the name. But if you squeeze it, all you get is gristle. Oh. And it, it's just it's just not good. Okay, so we want to go to the locally yes. made yes. kielbasa of your choice. Yes. Okay, now we were talking about the title of this episode is the hunky platter. So we were all saying like, what does hunky mean? We've all heard it. Um, there's actually a person who makes a pierogi uh, form called Hunky Bill. You can get on the internet and uh, order a pierogi maker from Hunky Bill in Canada. Yes. Um, Makes so, 18 at a time. <laughs> it's for mass production pierogies. <laughs> you can bang them out. Yep. So what is a hunky? Well, originally a hunky was a slur. People use that to tag Eastern Europeans who came to work in the coal mines. So it really okay. originated West Virginia and Pennsylvania. But as we always do in hunkies, we took the word back over. And now we refer to ourselves as hunkies. And it's a special thing, because not everyone can be a hunky. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a real hot-looking guy, yeah, we and you're could, from Eastern yeah. Europe, you could be a hunky hunk. Yes, you could. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you could. Awesome. Okay, now the last thing on the list for the hunky platter I mm-hmm. added, which is brioche. That's for when you have heartburn from all that butter. You want to <laughs> have some brioche, which is a little uh, antacid that's in tiny little rock form. So and that funny funny story regarding that in the same segue, we had a customer at the concession stand. He was a local police officer, and he would come and I'd entice him with the program. Hey, we got pierogies. Okay, give me that and two Lipitor. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you need with this sort of food. Um, so you are you? Uh, where are you from? What is your heritage? My and father's. My grandfather was from Ukraine, and my grandmother was from Poland. Okay. So I have a little bit of everything. But uh, during the war, they lived everywhere um, during the war, and they could speak six or seven languages. So we're just kind of a mix- melting pot. So this is World War Two. World War Two, sorry. Okay. And my neighborhood when I was growing up was all ethnic. Most of the people did not speak English. 
So we had a little bit of everyone there. So we ate Croatian, we had Yugoslavian, we had Polish, we had Ukrainian. And we actually Neat. had a... Yes, and we had a man who smoked his own kielbasa. Oh. He had a smokehouse. So that's where we started getting our local. That was very local in yes. your neighborhood. Yes. Yeah. The guy in your block that's making kielbasa. Yep. Yes, they would trade awesome. things out of the garden for kielbasa. Oh, awesome. This is really, really interesting. So we're going to uh, try to make some of these foods and um, get them up on our Merrimack Bakehouse Facebook page and our website also is, uh, I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> MerrimackPodcast.com. MerrimackPodcast.com. <laughs> oh, there are so many things happening. It's just racing past me. I can't remember. <laughs> I really can. I have a terrible memory. Um, but we'll, <laughs> we'll try to get some of those up. And uh, we were at Merrimack we were at Mary Mac Bakehouse on Facebook, uh, in the kitchen with Mary Mac on Twitter, and uh, also our website that we just we're, mes- mentioned. We're at, at Mary Mac Podcast on Twitter. At Mary Mac, you know what? I'll just let I'll just let Anna tell you where everything is because I'm not really sure where I am right now. So probably it would be better if she did. Okay. Where can you find us, Anna? Well, <laughs> in addition to Mary Max personal Twitter and Facebook page, which is Mary Mac Bakehouse on Facebook and at Mary Mac Mixes on Twitter. Where we also have a podcast Twitter account, which is at Mary Mac Podcast. The website is MaryMacPodcast.com. Uh, we're on SoundCloud and um, in the kitchen with Mary Mac. And I also this past week added us to iTunes and Google Play. Oh, awesome. Awesome. So that's that's where we are at, and probably next week I'll find some more platforms to be on. Well, that's terrific. <laughs> well, if you haven't got a, had a chance to try Eastern European food, uh, we gave you some good examples. I think the halushki is a very easy thing to make, and I think mm-hmm. that would be something. It's it's really, really good, too. It's very simple, but it's really good. Um, and I hope you get a chance to try a pierogi somewhere or try to make a pierogi and uh, all these other delicious things. I hope you have a kielbasa smoker right in your neighborhood, but if you don't, <laughs> look around for somebody local because, you know, local is best. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Mary Lou, for joining well, us. thank you for having me. Thank you for producing our show, Anna, and trying to remember what everything is and where it goes and what it does. You're welcome. And for not yelling at me too much. Also, well, thanks for that. this is the first episode where we've had a guest on who is not related to us. Hey! This is awesome. We're hey. expanding. Oh, in the world. I feel special. <laughs> first official guest. Oh, I feel special. <laughs> Make sure you check out the Jagoff blog and look for our hunky platter on there and enjoy a hunky platter with your family. Thanks for listening if you did, and if you didn't, too bad for you. <laughs>